So then today we'll start discussing about the nuclear uh, structure rather. You know that a survey of the data on radioactivity uh, in the light of uh, the Ford nuclear theory of atom at once raises a question about the constitution of the nucleus. A mechanism capable of emitting alpha, beta and a whole spectrum of monochromatic gamma rays must possess a well-ordered though probably very complex structure and first of all uh, you know uh, what are the constituents of uh, the nucleus so several theories have been proposed which may be called according to uh, the nuclear transition or the nuclear constituents selected out of the elementary particle you know some of the known things like the known theory which has been proposed is proton electron nuclear structure and number two is proton neutron electron structure now this is well known theory which has already been developed and uh, of this you know uh, has it, it has found the general acceptance also okay <clears throat> now this theory it was earlier proposed and uh, it has certain uh, you know acceptance uh, you know kind of an acceptance because of, uh, of because of some of the facts experimental facts which were prevailing at that time also and some of the facts uh, which obviously uh, establish or uh, which uh, helps to uh, uh, strengthen the position uh, the position of this particular uh, this, uh, the hypothesis that is proton electron nucleus the structure is number one is the discovery discovery of of the whole number rule whole number rule okay by mass spectrum this is one of the reason okay analyze justified that the different this particular thing it described that different nuclei are built up from the same simple nuclei of hydrogen or to some extent we can say proton number two is the emission of the emission of beta rays now this is an electron okay from the emission of beta rays from where from natural radioactive nuclei now this also confirms the existence of electron in the nucleus so the first assumption seems to be correct now number third is the emission of the emission of alpha rays okay that is this also from the natural radioactive nuclei seems to again confirm the existence of protons and electrons in the nucleus okay it was assumed that helium nuclei being almost exactly four times as heavy as a proton with a positive charge twice as great might consist of four protons combined with two electrons okay so this has been confirming the first uh, uh, you know assumption proton electron structure the fourth thing which further strengthen this thing was the electrical neutrality the electrical neutrality this also confirm the, the electrical neutrality of the atom this also seems to confirm okay the thing that there is a proton and a electron in the nucleus but there uh, now the proton theory uh, which appears now this uh, the, the, now we can say that the proton electron theory uh, this appeared to be sound enough in many respect but it has a number of serious difficulties okay what we know is that the application wave magnet mechanics it indicates that the electron cannot exist inside the nucleus now according to uncertainty principle now the thing is that electron do not exist inside the nucleus now this has been already been uh, you know established by the hertz and the uncertainty principle what we know uh, from the uncertainty principle is that del q del p is nearly equal to h where del q is this is the uncertainty in uh, determining the position and this one 
in the momentum of the particle. Now the radius of the nucleus, okay, we assume it to be 10 to the power minus 14 meter of the order of this much. There are maximum uncertainty in the position of the helium nucleus, that is delta Q will be nearly equal to 2 to the power minus 14 meter. So that delta P will be equal to H by delta Q nearly, obviously. So that will give you the value 3.3 .3 into 10 to the power minus 20 joule second per meter. Now, if delta P is the uncertainty in the momentum, okay, so the momentum electron must be at least comparable with this magnitude. That is, P must be nearly equal to, say, uh, nearly equal to the uncertainty in the momentum, 3.3 uh, into 10 to the power minus 20 joule second per meter now to estimate the uncertainty okay. to estimate the uncertainty uh, in energy of the electron we must use the relativistic formula now uh, what happens is uh, according to which the total energy of, uh, of the particle of the rest mass m and momentum p is given by e square is equal to p square c square plus m square c to the power 4. Now, substituting the value of p, c, m and c, obviously, it will be get to the power minus 22 joule. Okay. So, <coughs> or e equal to 10 to the power minus 11 joule, which is nearly equal to 60 MeV. Okay. Converting into mega electron volt. This means that if an electron exists inside the nucleus, they must have kinetic energy of the order of of the order of 60 MeV. But experimental observation, what does it show? It shows that the kinetic energy can never exceed 4 MeV. Okay, clearly this influences the the inference is that the electron do not exist inside the nucleus. Now, uh, there are also some other difficulties which are connected with nuclear spin, magnetic moment, etc. Okay. So, uh, so these are some of the facts which uh, further signal this thing that the, uh, the you know, the uh, electron-proton theory of the nucleus uh, structure is not correct. So, then there comes proton-neutron theory which is the most acceptable one okay now the composition of the nucleus has been you know uh, is that a proton and neutron now chadwick he discovered a new uh, neutral particle neutron he showed that when alpha particles are bombarded to beryllium nuclei neutrons are produced according to the reaction say for example b94 plus he 2 it's going to give you carbon 6 plus neutron. So the discovery of neutron by Chadwick exhibits the presence of neutron inside the nucleus. Okay, so therefore after the failure of electron neutron theory, okay, this uh, theory at once gained the importance. Now, according to this theory, the electrical neutrality of the atom as a whole, uh, you know, it can be assumed, it can be explained in a very simple way. So, say for example, the helium nucleus. So, the helium nucleus uh, with atomic number 2 and mass number, say, mass number 4. Okay. Say, in, uh, instead of consisting proton uh, and two electron, consist of two proton and two neutron. Now, as the neutron is an electrical neutral particle, this is electrically neutral with nearly the same mass as that of a proton. The helium atom is a neutral, is neutral a whole even with only two extra nuclear electron. So, the sum of the masses of two proton and neutron is of course somewhat greater than the mass of the helium nucleus. But this excess, it is explained as in the older theory of nuclear composition by assuming that a considerable loss of energy occurs. Okay, as the four particles are brought together into a helium nucleus and accordingly, uh, according to Einstein's mass energy relation, this loss of energy is accompanied by a loss of mass. Now, <clears throat> this is how we can establish this thing that 
the, the a proton that uh, nucleus with proton and neutron can be a stable one okay now one thing is there uh, which comes in our mind about the stability of the nuclear nucleus so when we say that the uh, proton neutron theory has assumed the importance okay the question is how the nucleus hold together the positively charged proton packed closely together which develops coulomb repulsive forces uh, rendering the whole arrangement highly explosive so the force of attraction that keeps the proton and neutron together is not gravitational okay which is very very small uh, now it is not believed that the particle and set nucleus are held together by means of a strong attractive force called the nuclear force the forces are highly complex in its nature and differ in character from the gravitational and electrostatic force they are nearly the nuclear force actually if you can see it is nearly 137 times okay stronger than electrostatic force and about 10 to the power 39 times stronger than the gravitational force okay so the experimental results revealing the reviews that the following info for reviews of, or rather gives the following information about the nuclear forces which is number one say these are strong attractive forces between these are or there are in fact there are strong attractive forces between nucleons between nucleons okay so the forces between the neutron and the proton or uh, between two proton and between two neutrons are every uh, you know uh, it depends upon the internucleon distance. So the force of uh, attraction between nucleon is appreciably strong when their distance is 1.9 into 10 to the power minus 15 meter. Okay, as it as it is the case in most of the nuclei, and the force you know decreases with the increase on the internucleon distance. Okay, and vanishes when the nucleons are farther apart than 10 to the power minus 14 uh, meter. It has to be minus 15. Okay, so number two is like the forces between two nuclei is charge independent this is very important the force between two nucleons is charge independent okay right so it is the same for all the three type of nucleons pair say and a neutron proton 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 or neutron proton okay Number third is number third is uh, the nuclear force. The nuclear force are short range. Okay, that is a nuclear interacts with a limited number of nearest neighbor and not with all the nucleons contained in the nucleus. Okay, so this is very very important. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and number four is the nuclear forces are spin dependent that is the depend on the relative spin of interacting nucleus for example the nuclear forces between two nucleons having a parallel sign is a stronger okay so parallel sign is stronger than that between the two nucleus having anti parallel spins okay so you can take an example of deuteron in which the constituent proton and neutrons have parallel spin is stable while the nucleus having only two proton or only two neutrons in which the nucleus have anti-parallel spin do not exist so uh, this is something related with the nuclear forces the structure and as far as the size of the uh, you know uh, this thing is concerned uh, we'll talk about the uh, radius what we know is that uh, while studying the scattering of alpha particle by light nuclei, it has been discovered by Rutherford. Okay, uh, that uh, <coughs> uh, in case of a light nuclei, the distance of the closest approach, closest approach is of the order of three into ten to the power minus fifteen meter. Okay, the distance of the closest approach at which anomalous scattering begins to take place was identified as the measure of the nuclear size. So this has been assumed as the measurement of the nuclear size. So, for example, let's say if you need to find out some kind of a formula for this thing, we just we if we, 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 we just ignore some uh, uh, small asymmetries of some nuclei from a spherical shape and assuming uniform distribution of nuclei inside the nucleus, the nuclear mass density rho m remains constant over most of the nucleus and decreases rapidly to zero. 
so as nuclear mass is nearly proportional to the mass number a mass density rho is given by mass number by volume that is a by b which is equal to constant okay now from here what we can say this implies that the nuclear volume is nearly proportional to the mass number a so v is proportional to a so 4 by 3 pi r cube is proportional to a here r is the radius of the nucleus so r is proportional to a to the power 1 by 3 or r equal to r naught a to the power 1 by 3 here r naught is a constant and is called the nuclear radius parameter so uh, today up till uh, this is the thing which we have done today next class we will do some other topic related to the nuclear thank you